Yo, the flip is complete. Tommy Kinsler said no thanks to the Florida Gator, but yes to the Miami Hurricanes. Welcome to the U. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet, including pregame and postgame for Miami Hurricanes football. And thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Miami Hurricanes have another one adding a great piece to this offensive line class, which is already looking really good, and it's certainly not done by any stretch of the imagination. Three-star offensive lineman Tommy Kinsler, a.k.a. Bruno, is a Miami Hurricane. He announced Thursday night from his mother's birthday dinner, so congratulations not only to Bruno but to his entire family because I know that that was a big moment for him. And, yeah, Tommy Kinsler, he's a former Florida Gator commit decommitted from Florida about four weeks ago and had been trending to Miami ever since. Uh, I think it was one of the worst kept secrets out there that whenever he decided to make his announcement, he was going to pick Miami and he did. He'd been trending to Miami. There's so many things I love about this player. Let's start with his size. Six foot six, 330 pounds. Yes. And this guy is an athletic unicorn he plays with a nasty streak very quick got very good feet that's one of the reasons why he was so effective at offensive tackle this past year after playing guard for his first couple of years at trinity christian high school in ocala he's a very strong pass blocker and in the run game and you know mario cristobal Alex Mirabal and Josh Gaddis are going to absolutely love this. He can bully defenders and put guys on the ground. Something that really sets Tommy Kinsler apart, though, from other linemen with similar classifications and similar size and dimensions. He gets set apart from the rest of the pack by his versatility. And guys, this is This is a premium. When Cristobal and Mirabal are out on the trail identifying offensive linemen they want in the program and guys they want to give offers to, versatility is a big one. I think versatility or lack thereof or at least an unwillingness to embrace versatility is one of the reasons why they cooled down on Peyton Kirkland before he ended up committing to Texas. Tommy Kinsler has that versatility. Um, Earlier in his high school career, played mostly guard as a sophomore because he was surrounded by upperclassmen who ended up at Power 5 schools, so a very gifted offensive line room at his high school in Ocala. Uh, Then he moves to tackle last year as a junior, played both left tackle and right tackle. Uh, He's got that background playing guard, which is probably where he's going to settle at the University of Miami. For what it's worth, he's even got a background playing on the defensive line as well. That's not going to be something he does at the college level, but it just goes to show you how versatile this guy is. He can play all over the field. So he's likely at the U going to find a home at one of the two guard positions. But knowing that he's a very serviceable tackle as well, he's got the size and the footwork to play tackle. That's a big thing. He's really rangy, quick, and athletic. So he's able to play outside no problem whatsoever. So even if he settles as a starting guard within the next couple of years, he can plug and play at tackle if needed. If injuries happen and there are rotation concerns, he's certainly able to fill a a void basically anywhere on that offensive line. Uh, This is one of those players where, um, and, you know, I, I don't know how certain political things fall with the star system and all that. Cause we say this about some of the players in Miami's class. I think the quarterback Emery Williams is better than a three-star player. I think Bruno Kinsler is better than a three-star player. Certainly the way that Miami and Florida were recruiting him would indicate they value him above a three-star level. He was recruited more like a four-star player. And there are some really cool stories here. 
with Tommy Kinsler. Uh, I mentioned his high school, Trinity Catholic in Ocala, Florida. He is so well coached there. If you guys check out allhurricanes.com, uh, Sports Illustrated Hurricanes page, I do some work for them now. It's an awesome, awesome family there. Uh, unbelievable piece that was posted on All Hurricanes with quotes from his high school offensive line coach, Aaron Johnson. So one of his O line coaches at Trinity Cat at Trinity uh, is a Trinity Catholic or Christian? I think it's Trinity Catholic. Uh, I want to make sure I say the name of his high school correctly. But TC uh, Aaron Johnson is one of his O line coaches there, who's a former Kansas City Chiefs offensive lineman. Played some in the Arena League as well. Bounced around a little bit, uh, but an excellent coach. So Johnson over the summer he took Tommy Kinsler down to the University of Miami summer camp recently. And do you know what they did down there? He watched the way Alex Mirabal coaches and the way Coach Mirabal ran drills and the techniques that Alex Mirabal teaches to his offensive linemen. And then since then, Aaron Johnson has had Tommy Kinsler on a training regimen to match as closely as possible the training regimen that Alex Mirabal puts his offensive linemen under in order to get Kinsler ready for Miami next year. So I think this is tremendous coach coaching and hopefully, and honestly, um, I, I know that Aaron Johnson is certainly not the only coach to do this. This does happen around the country. When you know what university one of your star players is going to play for, you try and prepare them for that next level. I hope more and more coaches do this because it's great for the kids. I mean, you want to talk about getting guys ready to hit the ground running once they get to their school. This is a great way to do it. Um, here's uh, a couple of quotes from Coach Johnson to Sports Illustrated. He says, Basically, what I try to do is have them familiarize with the drills they're going to be doing in college, he explains. Number one, making it hard here because college is tough, right? So not having them be surprised by that kind of grind. We work every day, but you know, towards the senior year, which is what Kinsler's going into, we try to get them to where they form some of the techniques they'll see in college because it's the worst, because the worst thing is to go to college and be totally shocked, he says. And hopefully Kinsler, you know, ends up being uh, an early enrollee so he can get to Miami next spring, which is going to get him even more ahead of the curve, right? If he gets a whole spring session in before fall camp starts for 2023. Uh, he says, for most offensive linemen, that's how it's going to be regardless of what you do because it's totally different in terms of level of play and stuff. But as far as drills, we try and replicate some of the things that they're doing. Uh, he says, as far as drills for Kinsler – trying to replicate the things that they're doing at Miami. Really, that's what I try to do, he says. Um, uh, further, Johnson talked about giving Kinsler different concepts to work with outside of the norm for a high school player, right? Because what they're doing at Trinity is, you know, probably not the same as what they're doing at the University of Miami. He says, I lean on offensive, I lean on offensive line coaches that I like what they're doing and give Bruno a toolbox where it's not just one thing. He says, what we are doing, it's great for working a gallop, working double unders, hands, different things, because you know even steps, different steps, steps aren't always the same based on where guys align. So I think Miami's getting a great one, and I think it's really good to know for anyone who's a fan of the University of Miami and expects Mario Cristobal to build a wall over the next couple of years with his offensive line recruiting to know that Tommy Kinsler, who you know we presume it's a verbal commit, so he still has to put his pen to paper in December, right? Verbal commit, but assuming he arrives on campus in less than a year's time for spring ball, that his high school coaches are going to have him as prepared as possible to plug right into what Alex Mirabal and Mario Cristobal are implementing at Miami and that this guy is going to end up being a great player at the U. Um, and so some of the factors, because we mentioned it, Kinsler, he was a Gator commit, dropped that commitment in early July, flipped now officially to Miami. And one of the factors that he cited in flipping to Miami is just the trust that he has in Cristobal and Mirabal. And why not? Right. Because and obviously Miami's not getting all of them because like Olau Salinan decided he'd rather play for the Crimson Tide, which is not a bad place to be, let's be honest. But so many offensive linemen are going to gravitate towards Miami because Miami has a former O-lineman as their head coach. 
and they've got one of the more highly regarded offensive line coaches in the country. So players know because they saw what Cristobal and Mirabal did at Oregon for the last several years. Players know uh, from the offensive line, if they come to the U, it's going to really prepare them for the next level. And that's always going to be attractive for offensive linemen. And so here's what uh, here's what Kinsler had to say about Miami. Uh, he talked about Coach Mirabal, who he loves. He's a great coach, he said. He really knows what he's doing. And clearly, Mirabal and Cristobal know what they're doing on the recruiting trail. So you like the way that this offensive line class is coming together. They're absolutely not finished with it. Uh, the biggest prize has been Francis Maui Goa, who committed on the 4th of July, top offensive tackle in the class of 2023. That's another versatile guy, by the way. You talk about versatility. Maui Goa plays primarily right tackle at IMG Academy, can play left tackle, no problem, can move inside to guard, no problem for whatever, you know, he'll probably end up being a tackle, but I think that kind of depends on who else Miami brings in. Uh, but yeah, that's a versatile guy and one of the best O linemen in the country, period, for the class of 2023. Uh, you know, you add Kinsler to the group, Antonio Tripp, who I love, is in that group, and someone that people are are sleeping on. And I think the reason why they're sleeping on Frankie Tinelau is because this guy hasn't been playing ball in the United States. He just moved over from Australia. He's going to play at Miami LaSalle next year. He's uh, considered a three-star offensive tackle, but very few people have actually scouted him because I don't I don't know how many of the re uh, recruiting services are like paying for their scouts to make round trips to Australia to watch players in person. So they're relying on what they've seen from him coming over stateside to play in camps. Um, uh, everything that I've heard about Tinelau, he's going to be a work in progress because he does, he's more of a rugby guy than he is an American football guy at this point. So he's going to be a work in progress, but very lean muscle mass, tremendous build, big, strong guy who hopefully absorbs all of the things he learns like a sponge. And so Miami's going to be in really good shape with the offensive line. And then you have to certainly, we're still on Samson Okunlola watch, who's the third ranked tackle in the country, been trending to Miami. Um, you know, I wonder if, uh, if Monroe Freeling, six foot seven offensive tackle who we talk a lot about could end up signing with the U as well so everything is good here um oh man guys you want to keep it locked right here to locked on canes we're getting some interesting smoke signals for a couple of the top recruits in the country we're going to be seeing some of those at the cookout on campus at the U, a big recruiting event that's happening at the end of the dead period, July 30th at the University of Miami. We're going to see some really big fish at that cookout. We'll see if Miami can close some of these guys. I always close when I use betonline.net. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. Find all of your favorite sports events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, even golf. BetOnline.net. I'm on there every day, guys. It continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. I'm loving Miami over under eight and a half games for next year, by the way. I keep smashing that over. I think the Canes are going to win nine, ten games next year. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening right now. Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts Apple, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you get your pods. We are part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. So uh, Miami did take an L last night, I guess. Um, I wasn't expecting this player to commit to Miami whatsoever, but we were in his finalist group. Four-star defensive tackle, John Walker. He chose UCF. He's from Kissimmee. Uh, he chose the hometown UCF Knights over Miami, Florida, and many others. Um, so again, it's like, I, I never really at any point in the last couple of weeks expected John. I would have liked to have had him actually because He's he's gigantic. He's uh he's like 6'3, 330 pounds. I like that profile for defensive tackles. I know that that's kind of a dying breed now that it's going more athletic. That's not necessarily as much of a prototype for defensive. I would have liked to have had John Walker at Miami, 
But I think the real headline here is, you know, not only did he choose UCF over Miami, but he chose UCF over Florida. G5 Billy, he got stuffed in the locker from two directions last night. He got stuffed in the locker by Mario Cristobal for Tommy Kinsler. And then right as he was able to like pick the lock and escape the locker, Gus Malzahn and UCF come by and they stuff him in the locker all over again. Like, do you want John Walker? No. Right. So as a Miami guy, you know, every now and then we're going to miss out on some players. I'll take some L's here and there, but serious question, guys, because I would never joke about something like this. At what point do we as a University of Miami community at what point do we stop trolling our Florida Gator friends and just start to feel bad for them? Like, because honestly, all of the gifts that you guys are sending me of Mario stuffing G5 Billy in the locker and all the locker jokes, I've been laughing at all of them up until this point, but it's some it's just gonna be mean at some point. Because like at some point, it's like instead of trolling our gator friends, we might want to offer them hugs because it's it's getting pretty bad. And forget about your seminal friends. Oh my goodness. If you got friends who are seminal fans, send them some money, send them like some cards, get well soon, because it's been really, really rough going and recruiting for the Florida State set. Like I floor, like I guess it's still funny with Florida. With Florida State, it's not even funny. It's like they're not even in the mix. For, at least Florida is finalists for some of these players. Florida State. Oh, it's been really, really bad. Oh, I know the comment section is going to be lit after what I just said about Florida and Florida State. I cannot wait to see the great comments that we get. Uh, so, okay, let's talk about uh, a couple of names I want to look at. Um, we're going to do later in the weekend, we're going to do kind of a recap of like the roll call of who was at the cookout because there's going to be a lot of 2024 and 2025 players who are going to be attending some big names. But let me focus on 2023 guys. I'm starting to see some smoke from Miami. I'm not ready to drop a Dono ball for this one yet, but I'm starting to see some smoke signals for five-star wide receiver Jurion Dickey. It's been essentially confirmed to me that he is going to be at the cookout tomorrow. Dickey is conveniently in town on vacation, so it's not an official visit. Miami didn't pay for him to fly over here. Uh, you know, his family apparently is on vacation in Miami from Palo Alto, California, where he lives. He attends Valley Christian High School in Palo Alto. He's over here on vacation. It's been all but confirmed to me that he's going to be attending the cookout tomorrow. And I'm starting to see a little bit of mutual love here. Now, is he trolling us a little bit? I I don't know for sure because, yeah, Jurion Dickey, as I know you guys are going to be pointing out to me, I, I know this, he is an Oregon commit. He is a verbal commit to Oregon. So Miami, and I'm sure others, because apparently he's not stopped his recruitment, Miami would be trying to flip him from Mario Cristobal's old stomping grounds to his uh, his current stomping grounds. Um, now, Oregon fans will tell you they're not worried about this one. He's just, you know, wants to just hang out. He's enjoying his life. He's enjoying his recruitment, but he's going to be solid to Oregon. So they're saying they're not worried. Maybe they're right. Maybe they're right. But let's not forget Mario Cristobal, the guy who was recruiting Dickey to Oregon in the first place. He wanted him at Oregon. Now Mario's at the U. He starts recruiting Jurion Dickey to Miami. They should probably be a tad worried, right? Because Mario Cristobal is not in the business of like wasting his time courting players that he has zero chance with. Okay. So I we'll see, we'll see what happens there. And I, I was specifically told on on Dickey that we're going to know a lot more coming out of the weekend. Cause I keep asking people like, is this, is this serious? Like, do you think that we could really flip Dickie from Oregon? No one can say for sure right now. Um, but I think after the weekend and after the cookout, we're going to have a better idea. You know, who else is going to be at the cookout? This one I would love to grab Samuel Mapemba, five-star edge rusher from IMG Academy. He's one of the top recruits in this class, period. And Miami has definitely turned up the heat for him in his recruitment. He's also visiting Florida soon. So that's going to give Mario yet another chance to stuff Napier in the locker. Um, so uh, IMG, as we know, IMG Academy over there in uh, Bradenton, 
It's becoming a Miami pipeline, which is great to see because boarding school, they attract the best talent. It's a football factory, IMG. So when you can develop a good relationship with their coaches and their players and you start getting more and more players from IMG to commit to you, they have friends who are in lower classes, younger friends. They're going to spread the word how great Miami is, and it's just going to become like a like a tradition that they pass on from class to class to class. Uh, Miami already has uh, three commits, I believe, from IMG. Yeah, three commits from IMG so far. Francis Maui Goa, who's the top-rated recruit in Miami's class, and they've got Jaden Wayne and Riley Williams. And actually, just to go to, goes to show you how much of a football factory IMG is, Miami's three IMG commits are three of the top five players in their class, period. So three out of Miami's top five are made up of IMG players. And if they're able to get a commitment from the Pemba, he would be in that top five as well. Uh, so then I think you'd have four out of the top six would be from IMG Academy. I'm not... This is not a Dono ball either. I'm not dropping a Dono ball on Samuel Mapemba, but I feel pretty good about where Miami is for him. Um, let's see. All right, so when we come back, I want to talk about some of the responses we've been getting from you guys. And you can tweet us, by the way, day and night on Twitter at Locked on Canes. You tweet us at Locked on Canes. You follow us. We will follow you back. And if you tweet us any comments or questions you have about Canes football, the 2022 season coming up, 2023 recruiting. Uh, we like to bring, maybe not all of them, because we've been getting a lot more tweets lately, humble brag. Maybe not all of them, but we like to read as many tweets as possible on the shows. We usually do a couple segments per week that we devote to Q&A. But I want to talk about the All-ACC team, where when we come back, where Miami stands preseason, and where they're going to stand postseason so keep it locked right here to locked on canes thank you so much for making locked on canes your first listen today available free wherever you get your podcast so make sure to subscribe on apple spotify odyssey everywhere else and make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel as well so uh, we talked about this a little bit yesterday to set the table uh, coming out of ACC kickoff, that's what they call the media days. The media votes on a number of different things, including conference winner, division winners. Miami did get the votes to win the Coastal. Not the ACC. Clemson got that. But Miami has been voted the favorite to win the Coastal this coming season. I certainly agree with that. But the Hurricanes have three players appearing on the preseason All-ACC team. And this is just first team. There's no second team, third team. This is just a first team. Punter Lou Headley. I agree with that one. I think old Lou, who's like 30, <laughs> he's awesome. The Aussie punter, Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. Uh, I think he's going to be on the postseason All-ACC team after getting these preseason honors. Tight end Will Mallory is on the All-ACC team. Now, I don't mean this to take anything away from Will, but I wonder if Will is going to be on the postseason All-ACC team only because I think Elijah Arroyo – is going to be the Miami tight end who shines brightest this year. I think Arroyo is that good. So I wonder if Arroyo might steal Will Mallory's spot on the All-ACC team once it's all said and done. And then the third Miami player who makes All-ACC is left tackle Zion Nelson. I agree with that one. No argument there. Um, so who's going to be on the postseason team? I think Headley is going to be on the postseason team as well. Um, by the way, most of the votes that we got, people who responded to us on Twitter at Locked on Canes, this is why I love you guys so much because you're all so smart. James Williams, I agree. James Williams, number zero, number one in your hearts, number zero on your programs. He is the total package at safety, uh, started to really shine as a true freshman last year. He's only getting bigger, stronger, faster, and smarter heading into his sophomore season. I think James Williams is going to dominate. That guy can do everything. He's a ball hawk. He's a big hitter. He's quick. Oh, he bring, he conjures up images of some of the great safeties in years past in Miami. And Miami's got a really good safety room because Cam Kinchins and Avante Williams are studs as well. But I think James Williams is the one that's going to shine brightest out of that group. I'm expecting, like you guys do, I'm expecting James Williams to make the the post-season uh, All-ACC team. So most of the responses came in for James Williams. We got some responses as well for Tyler Van Dyke, and I tend to agree. I mean, listen, 
I talk about TVD where I think he's going to be a borderline Heisman Trophy finalist. I don't know for sure if he'll get invited to the ceremony, but I think he's going to be in the conversation, and I think he's going to be looked at as a top five quarterback in the entire country. So by that logic, I'm thinking Tyler Van Dyke could very well end up all ACC first team at season end. I mean, the guys that he's looking up at when it came into the voting are uh, Brennan Armstrong and Sam Hartman. I think Miami's going to have a better season than both of those teams, Virginia and Wake Forest. And I think TVD is going to be one of the primary drivers of that. So I think he's going to end up getting all ACC nods. Um, you know, it's funny. A lot of people um, bring this to my attention that they they watch and they follow other college football shows that don't necessarily specialize in Miami, right? Because I think most of the Miami people are, are very high on Tyler Van Dyke. And how couldn't you be after watching what he did last year as, as a redshirt freshman? But people tell me that a lot of the other shows out there that cover the ACC and they talk about quarterback play are really trying to downplay Tyler Van Dyke, that they think he's actually being overrated heading into the season, right? There was somebody who was sending me a quote from another show that said they thought Tyler Van Dyke was going to end up being a bust in his sophomore year. Like, I feel sorry for anyone who feels that way. Doubt TVD at your own peril. Like, I am a very picky evaluator of quarterbacks at Miami, Right, because there have been certain guys that have had like a good game here or there. Like people tried to anoint Jaron Williams, and I'm like, mm, okay, I'm not completely feeling it. And you know, obviously Malik Rozier had a really good run for about ten games, but I never really felt like he was, you know, really a cut above. But he's a great guy. I, I feel bad even bringing up these names because I don't want to sound like I'm ripping anybody. But the point being, I am very, very picky about um quarterbacks before i'm ready to anoint a guy i haven't felt as good about a u quarterback than i do about tvd in a very very long time like i think the last time i had like really major feels like a man crush on a miami quarterback was probably brad kaya i think it was what 2013 when he started to get playing time um and I feel better about Tyler Van Dyke than I ever did about Brad Kaya. And I mean that as a compliment because I really, really like TVD. So there. Um, another hurricane I think could end up all ACC first team at the end of the year, Leonard Taylor, who's an absolute freak. And you saw late in the season what he could do. He's going to bully interior linemen. Uh, led Miami in tackles for a loss last year. I And, you know, the thing is, at, def at the, the defensive line, there's a lot of competition in the ACC, especially at Clemson, because they're loaded on the defensive line. So it may just be tougher for Taylor to like break through, but he's certainly going to be a candidate for first team all ACC. And then you look at other positions like Miami could have some running backs in the conversation, but I think that they're going to be hurt by how much depth they have in the running back room, right? Because it's so loaded that you have to wonder if any of Parrish, Rooster, Cheney, Franklin, or Citizen, are they going to get enough of a workload to have first team all ACC type of stats? Because they're so it, it's like it's like the Hunger Games in that running back room. It's like a battle for it's like a battle royale for survival and playing time. Like it's gonna be like it, it's gonna be hard to think any of those guys is gonna be a quote unquote featured back because it's such a loaded room that I don't know if anybody's gonna have like the stats you would need to be first team all ACC. The running back room hasn't been this loaded in maybe two decades, right? Uh, and I don't think Miami's going to have any all ACC linebackers, but with Charlie Strong coaching that unit, you know, you never, you never know. I'm, I'm especially excited to see what people like Chase Smith as a sophomore can do and Wes uh, Besaint as a freshman can do. So there's some potential there as well. Wide receiver, we'll see. Um, you know, Xavier Restrepo, I think is going to have a ton of catches from the slot and, you know, uh, I'm excited to see what Frank Ladson can do. He's got to stay healthy. I think that's the biggest thing. He struggled with injuries. And Colby Young, what can he do coming out of junior college? But he's got the size and the athletic profile. You know, Miami's got a ton of outside guys who could be candidates. So we'll see what happens there. But I, I think I gave you the names that I and you guys feel most strongly about could end up being uh, postseason all ACC. And then hopefully, our, uh, our our Borigalis brother, Andy, hopefully he has a big year kicking the football so Miami can have like a, a clean sweep on special teams. All right, that's all for today's episode. 
Make sure to subscribe. If you're watching us on YouTube, smash those like buttons. Make sure to share this episode so the entire Canes community knows what we're doing here every single day. And make sure you check out Locked On ACC, which is another part of our great family here on the Locked On Network. Make them your second listen every day. Host Candace Cooper and the local experts take you across the ACC in 30 minutes or less. Make Locked On ACC your second listen. Thank you for making us your first. We will talk again. We will have a special Saturday episode coming up. We'll talk about the cookout. We'll talk some more recruiting on another episode of Locked On Canes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.